Globally, social media services, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram are back up and running after an outage that lasted almost six hours facebook says the company blamed it on an internal technical issue that was handled by facebook engineers the social media behemoth said there was no evidence that user data was compromised as a result of this downtime details of this and other stories from across the globe the services went down at about 4 Greenwich Meridian time with users beginning to gain access to sites at around 10 p.m. In a statement on Tuesday, Facebook said that faulty configuration change affected the company's internal tools and system which complicated attempts to resolve the problem. Down Detector, which tracks outages, said some 10.6 million problem reports around the world were received. However, the real number of people affected is much higher. More than 3.5 billion people use Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp. An outage of this scale for such a long time is rare. A disruption in 2019 left Facebook and other apps mostly inaccessible across the world for more than 14 hours. Meanwhile, Two more property companies are causing concerns over their ability to repay debt in China after missing debt payments as investors await for announcement about the future of struggling Chinese real estate giant Evergrande. On Tuesday, Cynic Holdings became the latest Chinese developer to be downgraded by a global ratings agency, Fitch Ratings because it had missed interest payments and due to uncertainty over a 246 million US dollars bond repayment due later this month. Beijing has not commented directly on Evergrande's financial problems, although the country's central bank and state media have signaled that the government is ready to help protect individual citizens exposed to the property market. Fears have grown in recent weeks about Evergrande's problems spreading through the world's second largest economy and having an impact on the global financial markets. Finally, major banks in Britain made a slight dent in their gender pay gaps last year, though industry observers say they still have a long way to go as several insurers went backward. Companies in Britain with more than 250 employees have been required to publish the difference between the pay and bonuses of their male and female employees since 2017. They got a reprieve last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, though many still filed data and had an extra six months to publish data for the 2019-2020. The financial services sector has typically shown one of the largest gender pay gaps in Britain, often attributed to a lack of women in senior jobs. Reporting for Lunchtime News, I am Teresa Mtai.